Have you ever wanted to start a podcast and just didn't know where to go to get your journey started? Well, look no further than Anchor Podcasting. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast, and it gives you everything you need for free in one spot, which you can use right from your computer or a mobile device if you need to record on the go. Creation tools allow you to edit and record your podcast to make it sound the best possible way for your audience and listeners. And they'll also distribute your podcast for you, so you don't have to go through the hassle of talking to different platforms in order to get your podcast through to everybody you wish. This includes Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and many more. You can easily make money through Anchor Podcasting, and it doesn't require minimum listenership. So once you get started and set up, money can flow in from all directions. So if you're ready to get started, download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's A-N-C-H-O-R.fm to get your ball rolling and start your podcast journey. All right, guys, we're back, and we are going to finish up on the Frank Camacho fight for Jeff Neal. So where we left off, we were talking about the the combo that Jeff Neal was using to set up where he touches the lead hand of the opponent. Now, I've already explained that, how if you touch the lead hand and you're in an opposite stance, which is when you would be able to touch the lead hand, it's going to get the opponent to think about you touching that hand. It gives you an opportunity to set up your strikes. It stops the opponent from throwing the lead hand, which they usually want to throw to jab and then set up their power shot. So uh, Camacho threw a sweeping left hook. Wait, where do we leave off? Okay, so we already did that, yada, yada, yada. Um, so where we left off is he continues to circle towards the weak side almost again, and it's almost like a reset. He's circling towards that weak side so that he's not going to run into power. He's not going to be in a lot of danger. And then he can set up his shots. Now, we've already talked about how he landed – that left high kick multiple times in the fight. Sometimes, you know, just off the bat, sometimes with that right hook into the left high kick, sometimes faking the straight left into the left high kick. Um, and he usually throws it off of the slip of the opponent. If the opponent slips to the outside of the left hand, it opens up the lane for the left high kick on the same side. So he controls the lead hand of uh, Frank Camacho and then goes right left hook, and uh, right, left hook. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, right hook to get the angle off to that side. So touch to control the lead hand. Right hook, get off on an angle. Could follow up with a left kick to the body or not. Just, just perfect technical stuff. Up next, he goes straight left hands. Straight left down the center to close the range. Frame off with the right arm and then guard up on the left side. So straight left frame to uh, avoid a lead left hook from the opponent and then guard up on the opposite side and uh, get out of range. Um, he touches the lead hand again, touch, touch, touch. Um, the opponent's going to think the straight left is coming because usually when he touches that lead hand, it's to get to the outside and then throw the straight left down the center. So he touches that lead hand, touch, touch, touch. Camacho slips to the outside of that straight left and lands a f and he gets hit with a flush left high kick and just crumbles and uh, Jeff Neal gets a second round knockout. So amazing stuff here. He set it up multiple times through the fight. As I explained, um, the opponent would slip to the outside of that straight left and would open up the lane for the left high kick. So amazing stuff. And now we're going to move to his next fight against uh, Chicago native, the bully Bilal Muhammad. Uh, rem remember the name, I think, is his new nickname. I know it used to be the bully, and I'm pretty sure he changed it to re remember the name Bilal Muhammad. So let's start it off. So right away, first round, he immediately puts the pressure on Bilal. He's pushing him back, and uh, but he also backs up just to keep a safe distance. This was something we saw different from his fight against Camacho. So he pushes him back to put the pressure on him and get him to go up against the fence. That's where he wants Muhammad to be. He wants him to be back to the fence so he can crowd him a little bit. Jeff Neal doesn't want to have his back to the fence. But he wants to be controlling. He wants to be pressuring. He wants to be pushing you back. So he moves in. He's pushing him back, pushing him back, but then he moves slightly back out of range. Pushing him back, pushing him back, slightly moving back out of range just to make sure he has enough distance to get full extension on his shots, and uh, that's something that he did. So uh, Neil tries to angle off to the left of Muhammad and uh, controlling the center of the octagon just to keep Bilal's back to the fence. Like I said, he wants to keep him back to the fence, so he's angled off to his left, and then he's pushing him 
And then he's pushing him back to the fence, just getting him back there so he can set everything up. Um, Neil tries the lead hook, straight left hand, and then angles off to his left. But uh, he faked the step into range two times prior to committing to the combo. So he's on the outside. He's not in range yet. Fake the step in. Fake the step in. Then goes three, two, and angles off to his left. Boom, boom, slip and get out of the way. Get out of the way. So he's in there. He's in there. Fake the step in. Fake the step in. Now commit. Three, two, slip out to your right and uh, get back to the center. Great stuff from Jeff Neal here. Like I said, gets you to think he's not going to do it, and then he does it. Um, like I said, making him bite on the faints, faints, and then you commit. Make him bite, then commit. Um, up next, Neil goes left body kick into straight left hand. So he's pushing him back. He gets on that angle from that previous combination. Boom, left kick to the body. This is a combo you'll see Jeff Neal do multiple times. He'll use that right hook to get the outside foot dominance and get on the angle, and then it opens up the lane for the left body kick. So right hook, step out to that side, boom, fire the left body kick. And uh, that's what he does here. But after he throws the body kick, he pulls the kick back, settles into southpaw, and lands the straight left hand. Um, I like to call this more of like a pulley effect. That's what this is. It's almost like you could call it a lawnmower. You could call it the uh, a pulley effect. By throwing that left kick and then pulling the foot back, you're bringing more power and more force into that left hand when you throw it because you're using the force and the retraction of the kick to add more force when you plant and land the straight left. So he goes left body kick, pull it back, boom, straight left hand. Good stuff here. Sets it up. Everything is set up. Oh, let's see. So, okay, we, we figured that out, yada, yada, yada. One thing I forgot to mention is he makes a slight step to his right and then lands the body kick into the straight left hand. You want to get on that angle. I think I covered it, but I, I wasn't sure because I have it written down here a different way. But you want to get on that angle. So he takes a slight step to his right. Now he's got a better chance because he's got that outside lead foot dominance. He goes boom, throws the kick, pulls it back, straight left. Um, then he just circles away to the left, back to the center. So he circles back to the center and uh gets to where he wants to be. He never wants to have his back against the fence. He wants to push Bilal back. He does not want his back to the fence. Neil throws the one-two to close the distance and just push Neil back to, or uh, push Bilal back to the fence. You want to, he always wants to push. He wants to pressure. And then after he throws the one-two to close the distance, pop, pop, he takes a slight step to his right and lands the left body kick again. Clean. Without the slight step, the kick would not land. You could be in front of a guy. You could be sparring or if you're in a fight, you could be in front of a guy and pivot on your lead foot and throw a, a rear body kick. But that slight step to the outside opens up the hips and gives you a better angle and a better, a better angle to land the kick to the body. So that little, that little one, two, we used to close the distance that little, and then the slight step to his right. Now he's got the open avenue to throw that kick and bop just from that slight step. Um, he goes after this, he goes a slap right hook to an inside left low kick. So he's already landed the body kick twice in the fight. Now he's using that right hook to land a kick to the leg. So now he's got Bilal thinking, okay, well, he already kicked me in the body. Now he's kicking me in the leg. Is he going to go back to the body or is he going to go to the legs? We don't know. So slap right hook to get that outside angle. Left inside low kick. Right outside low kick. And then left body kick. Uh, Wait, wait, wait. So, so slap right hook. Left inside low kick. Okay, he's going to kick me on the inside of the leg. So what the heck am I going to do? He kicked me in the body. He kicked me in the leg. Now he goes... Right outside low, low kick, which is going to kind of load up the hips on the left side. So now he's kicked the body, he's kicked the inside, and he's kicked the outside of the leg. What's next? You know, he, he's got everything. He's got the opponent thinking. He, he's doing something different every single time, and it's making the opponent kind of freeze. You've kicked him in the body multiple times. Now you go inside left low kick. Now you're going to switch your power and go to the uh, right outside low kick, which is going to direct the opponent towards the power because they're going to move towards the left, which is your power left hand. 
He steps in with the straight left hand and then angles off to his right to avoid the hook cross of Bilal. So he goes straight left hand, dart in. He knows Bilal's going to throw that lead hook to the straight right. So he covers up and angles off right after that straight left. Uh, this is called a dart. I have it, you know, down further. I have it explained a little bit more, but Dominic Cruz loves to do this. Um, I think Dominic Reyes did it against John Jones. When you're backing up, if the opponent's got you backing up and back to the fence, if you just throw that power hand and you use it to propel yourself forward, and then you use your lead foot to get off on the angle and turn, you can use it to either get back to the center or use it to, uh, get back to the center and control your opponent and push them back. Uh, Bilal Muhammad shoots a double leg takedown and gets deep, and he almost gets him down. But Neil is able to post on the left hand to keep his balance and get his feet back underneath him and then uh, fight back up to his feet and get his back to the fence. This is brilliant defense. Okay, so if I shoot a double leg, Nine out of ten times, I'm going to get your butt to touch the mat, and then you could usually, you know, buck your hips, shrimp out, and get back to your feet. Neil gets lifted, almost taken down by Je by uh, Bilal, but he posts up on that, on that left hand, and his, his feet are in the air, and he's holding up all of his body weight with the hand. If I was Bilal, I would have let go of one of the legs and tried to grab the hand and push forward to knock the base out from underneath him, but he wasn't able to do that. So he goes to get the takedown. Bilal posts up on the left hand, or uh, Jeff Neal posts up on the left hand to keep his balance, and then he, he bucks his hips back, gets his feet back, gets his back to the fence. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Just shows how explosive and how good Jeff Neal is. After this, Neil goes right back on the pressure and the fakes and feints to push him back to the fence. The key to this fight was the fakes, the feints, and pushing Bilal Muhammad back to the fence. You need to get Bilal back to the fence. That's where the best thing, or that's where everything can work for you in terms of uh, defensive and offensive positions. Um, Neil goes back on the pressure, and then he fakes the straight left hand into the left kick. Um, but meets it halfway with a knee to the body. This just shows how tricky Jeff Neal is. So he was always going either right hook to get the angle and a left body kick or straight left hand, left body kick or left high kick. This time he goes, fakes the straight left hand just to get a little bit closer, get that one or two steps in to close the distance. And then he throws a knee up the middle against Bilal. So it's always been a kick. Everything from that left side in terms of your legs was always a kick. But now he faked it, got Bilal to bite on it, boom, threw a knee to the body. Tricky, tricky technical stuff here. After he closes the distance and uh, pushes Bilal to the fence, he, uh, he briefly controls the right wrist of Bilal Muhammad, then lets go and fires a right uppercut. So he controls the wrist. He's got him in an over. Um, I think he has an overhook on the other side, and he's controlling the wrist. You always want to control the wrist of the opponent in a in a uh, in a clinch position or in an over under position up against the fence. Because if you don't control the wrist, the opponent can get the underhooks and. Uh, either circle and get you back to the fence or punch you and obviously get your mind off the takedown and then buck their hips off the fence, turn you around and get back to the center. But as he controls that right wrist of Bilal Muhammad, he lets go and then fires a right uppercut in a straight left hand. So he's got control of the wrist. He's got control of the wrist. He lets go, dips off to the side, right uppercut, straight left hand. This is what I was talking about. He, he loves that uppercut on the inside in the clinch. If you're really close to him, he loves to dip on the inside and throw that right uppercut, lift your head up, throw the straight left, go right uppercut, right hook, straight left. That right uppercut is a great punch for him when he's in close range to an opponent. Um, he frames off the head of Bilal Muhammad with the, with the lead right hand. Like I said, he loves to use the frames just to control the distance. And then he circles out to his left and moves back to the center and goes on the pressure. So he moves, he fakes, or uh, he frames off, circles, gets back to the center. Even if Neil doesn't react to the fakes of his opponent, or even if Neil does react, I'm sorry. Even if he does react to his opponent, he doesn't ever take a drastic step. So if an opponent fakes a punch, a lot of guys will take a drastic step to get out of the way, and then they got to take two more steps to close the distance and get in close. Not Jeff Neal. He'll take the step, 
or the opponent will fake and maybe he'll just take a brief step or he'll cover up. His hands are always high. He never drops his hands. His hands always up. Even when he's angling, his lead hand's always up in a high guard. Um, Neil throws an empty left kick and Bilal Muhammad blocks it. Then he throws a feeler left out. He throws a feeler left out and he saw Bilal move his head slightly to the outside of the straight left hand. So he lands, he throws an empty left kick. Nothing really happens. Bilal blocks it, you know, checks the kick. Then he throws a feeler left out there and he saw Bilal Muhammad move his head to the outside of the straight left. What happened in the Frank Camacho fight? He threw the straight left, saw that Camacho was going to move his head to the outside. This is usually going to end up setting up the left high kick for Jeff Neal. So he saw him move his head straightly out to the outside of the straight left hand. And uh, so he moves out, then comes back in with a hook cross. And the cross lands flush. So he's moving in, throws an empty left kick. Nothing really happens. Bilal blocks it. Then he throws a feeler left out to see where he goes. He sees that he slips out to the outside of the punch. Okay, that's not going to work. Now what's he going to do? Then he, then he fakes the straight left. He knows that Bilal is going to slip. Um, to the outside, then he goes, then he takes a drastic step to his right, throws that left hook, boom, or a right hook to the left cross, boom, boom, and the cross lands flush. Outside angle is take, you take the outside angle with the hook so that you're going to have the lead outside foot dominance. Like I said, outside foot dominance when it's opposite stances is very important and you see it here. So he, he, he throws that fake straight left. Doesn't, you know, he just to see what Bilal's going to do. He slips to the outside. Boom, left hook, right hook, direct him into the straight left. Boom, boom. Perfect stuff here. Amazing technical stuff from Jeff Neal. Now we move to the second round. Yeah, that guys, that was all the first round of this fight. So much stuff going on. Neal immediately goes on the forward pressure and uh, gets Bilal moving back to the fence. This is one thing that uh, Duke Rufus and his other coaches said they didn't want to happen. They don't want you to put your back to the fence against Jeff Neal. Bilal circles along the fence to his left and Neal meets him with a hook cross. Almost moves to the side of Bilal Muhammad with that hook to then set up the straight left to, to the chin. So... You know, a lot of guys will throw that right hook and they'll step to their right, which is important because it gives you the, the outside foot dominance, like I said. But some guys will throw that right hook, then step off to their left. Now you're on the outside. You've got the angle. You're not in front of them. You're more on the side of the opponent and you have a better chance to land the straight left. So right hook, brief step, you know, quick set into the left hand, left side, boom, left hand to the jaw. Um, then he just moves back towards the center. He never wants to be pushed back, always moving towards the center. Neil throws a 1-2 to get Bilal back to the fence. Obviously, that's where he wants him to be. Neil tries to parry the lead hand of Bilal and land the cross, jab, cross. Or no, he does land it. I'm sorry. God, there's so much in these breakdowns, guys. I'm sorry if it gets redundant, but it's important. And I'm going to upload these to YouTube and uh, I'll have some images and stuff, but I can't use clips. If I could use clips, it would be so much better, but I can't do it. I'll get copyrighted in like two seconds. So Neil tries to parry the lead hand of Bilal. Obviously, he always wants to control that lead hand so he can step to the outside and uh, fire the power shot. So he, he tries to parry the lead hand, and he lands the two which is the left hand, the straight left that he he's absolutely fantastic with, then goes jab, straight left, and uh, it lands a few more shots and then just backs up to the center. So it's just great combinations, but it's all fundamentals. So he he moves in, tries to parry that lead hand. Okay, 2-1-2, two, two, angle, get back to the center. Bilal tries to open up and, uh, you know, get a little crazy and close the distance on uh, Jeff Neal, but... You know, that doesn't work well for him. He tries to come into range and tries to close the distance and land some shots. And uh, he throws a lazy jab and Jeff Neal just counters with a 3-2 and it lands right on the button. So Jeff Neal was, he knew, Bilal knew that he wasn't going to win at range because Jeff Neal was just too technical and too crisp. So he tries to open up. He throws a lazy jab. Neal just slips. Boom, boom, hook cross. So even if you try to come in, and, uh, and and open up against Jeff Neal. He's just going to counter you with that straight left. That straight left is money. So Bilal, like I said, he tries to open up, throws a lazy jab, just slip, bop, bop, 
and count, counters him 3-2. The three directs you into the, into the power left. Boom, right on the jaw. Bilal shoots a double leg uh, and then changes to a head on the outside single. So when you shoot a double leg takedown, you know you're get, you get your hands underneath the butt. You lock your hands. You get your head off to the one side, and you elevate and then move towards the side that your head is on the outside of. That was sounded really confusing, but Bilal shoots a double leg, then transitions to a head on the outside single. So he takes that lead leg, goes head on the outside, tries to get a single leg, but Neil, um, and he briefly gets him down with this. This is something that we saw, you know, maybe for the first time. The first time he shot the double leg, Neil posted up on his hand and then got his butt back and got back to his feet. This time he shoots a double, changes to a head on the outside single, briefly gets Neil down, but Neil rolls to his back and carries the momentum of Bilal from that takedown and uh, uses it to turn back into him and get back to his feet. So he goes, he shoots a double, changes it to head on the outside single. Boom. He's going to try to rotate and get him down. He briefly rotates, gets Neil down to the ground, but Neil rolls to his back and uh, uses the momentum of the roll to carry Bilal with him. And then uh, turns back into Bilal, shrimps his hips back out, and gets back up. So if you roll with the momentum of a takedown, it, it's easier for you to get back up, and it's easier for you to, uh, you know, defend. If A lot of guys get taken down because the second they hit the ground, they settle in position. Neil, the second he hit the ground, he turned out. He turned one way, and then he turned into Bilal and uh, got back up to his feet, got his butt out. Muhammad started having success working the body in this round. Um, this is one thing you saw from Bilal Muhammad that he did have success with was that right hand to the body, the jabs, and the left hook to the liver from Jeff Neal. Or on Jeff Neal, sorry. Um, Neal lands another straight left hand and then frames off with the right hand to avoid the left hook and get out of range. So like I said, a lot of guys will try to counter because they're in a conventional stance. They'll try to counter with that lead left hook. Bilal, or, uh, Jeff Neal goes straight left frames off on that lead hand so it crowds the hook and it makes it go over the arm and not to the opponent's head and then he can angle off and get back to the center or just move out of range. Neil fakes the step. Uh, I don't know what I... Okay, so he faked the step in and Bilal tried to go with a right hook to, to the body but Neil met him with a straight left hand and it connected. So he faked the step in Bilal's like, okay, I'm going to slip out and try to take the body because that's been working for me in the fight. But as he opens up, because he leaves his chin exposed when you throw that left hook to the body, Neil just counters that hook with a straight left down the center. So instead of blocking the punch that was going to the body and uh, wasting time, he just timed it and countered it with a straight left. Like I said, guys, Jeff Neal is above, above and beyond better than a lot of guys in the UFC in terms of striking and. Uh, Striking technique. Um, he darts with the left hand just to circle back to the center. So Bilal was pushing him up against the fence after this. And he uses that left hand, like I said, you use that left hand to get back to the center, get that lead foot on the outside, circle, and get back to where you want to be so you're not up against the fence. Um, Bilal shot another takedown, and Neil just immediately got the underhooks underneath the arms and pushed him away. He was timing the takedowns. He was figuring out the timing, and it was only a matter of time for Jeff Neal. Neal slipped to the outside of Bilal Muhammad's jab and landed a lead uppercut. So Bilal's in an orthodox stance. Jeff Neal's in a southpaw. Bilal threw that jab out, so you can either slip to the inside or slip to the outside. You could cover up, but Jeff Neal doesn't do that. He likes to slip. So he slipped to the outside of his jab. Boom, lands a lead uppercut with that right hand. And then circled off to his right. So slip. So slip to the outside. Boom, right uppercut. And then circle and get back. Um, Neal threw a two, pulled two. So he pulls that, he throws that straight left. Pulls back because he knows Bilal's going to try to counter with either a right hand or a left hook. And then he comes right back into range. It's a two-pull two. If you get if you throw a two, 
get out of range, and then you have to take another step to get back in, that's different. But with a pull counter, you throw that power punch, you pull back, but you're still in range. You're just pulling your upper body back and putting the weight on the back foot. And then that weight on the back foot allows you to put more power into that second shot. So two, pull, two. And uh, after he did this pull, this is one thing I want to cover um, before we end up moving to the next part. This is going to be a long breakdown, guys, but I warned you, didn't I? <laughs> so uh, Neil throws the two with the left hand, but slips to the outside with the pull. So he goes two, pull, but he slips and takes a slight step to his left. He doesn't move towards his lead side because you would do that to set up the hook into the kick. He steps a little bit out to the rear side, which is going to put more weight on that back foot and allow for more power when you throw the other two. So cross, pull, slight step out to your to your left, boom, slight step, boom, lands that two. Great stuff here from Jeff Neal. And then he closes the round with a flurry, and uh, Jeff Neal's taking this fight. He's running away with it. The final round of this fight, uh, Neal opens up with a 1-1-2 right away, pushing him back. Got, he has to push the opponent back. 1-1-2. Um, he starts circling towards the weak side again, always moving towards the weak side. Never wants to move into the power, always move off to the weak side. Neal fakes the jab. Neal fakes the jab, cross jab, then tries the... Yeah, so he fakes the 1-2-1 one, one to close the distance, and then he tries to land the cross, then waits for Bilal to circle to his left and fires the 2. So he goes 1-2-1 one, one, fake, tries to land the cross, it doesn't work, then he pulls back, boom, lands the cross and lands flush. 1-2-1, one, one, tries to land the cross, then waits for Bilal to circle back left and land the left hand. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me explain this a little bit for you because it's kind of tricky. So he's standing in the southpaw stance, right? Your, your lead right, you know, you're going to go jab, cross, jab. So he does one, two, one. He just does that to get Bilal to think and to, to close the distance a little bit easier. So ba ba ba, close the distance. And then he tries to land the cross. It doesn't land. But he sees that Bilal's going to circle back that way because when you throw the left, the opponent's going to circle towards the right, which is your lead hand, which is the weak side. Like I said, you always want to circle towards the weak side. So he goes, one, two, one, tries to land the cross. It doesn't work. Bilal's going to circle to the right. Then he, he waits a little bit, fakes, sees Bilal move back to the left. And as he moves back to the left into the power hand, boom, he lands that straight left hand. Money, money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a little shout out to my buddy. Sorry, but we got to get back on track here. Um, Bilal tries to go with a right high kick and Neil just blocks it with the high guard. And then he returns with a feeler jab, step to his right and land the left body kick. So the right high kick, like I said, Neil likes to use that right hook to set up the left body kick. He goes jab, takes a slight step to his right just to get that outside foot, get that angle, open up the lane, left body kick. Um, after this, he fakes the left kick two times just to get Bilal thinking about the kick. This is what I'm talking about. He landed the kick to the body. Now he fakes it twice. Bilal's like, oh, he's going to kick again. Uh, uh, and it's just getting the opponent to freeze and stop for a second. Bilal shoots a double leg, but Neil's reading it from a mile away, you know, because, uh, Bilal doesn't really know what to do. He's kind of flustered at this point. Neil probably thinks he's going to get the takedown. They're at too far of a range. He shoots from uh, he shoots a lazy shot, and Neil just stuffs it. After he stuffs the takedown, he grabs the single collar clinch and lands a left hand on the break. This is another thing Neil's good at is breaking out of the clinch. Some other guys who are really good at this are Piotr Jan. Uh, that's the one guy that really comes to mind who's very good at striking off the break in the clinch. Neil closes in with a jab, fakes the cross, uh, fakes the straight left, and then fires the left again and drops Bilal Muhammad. This is what I'm talking about. Really tricky setups here. So he closes in with a jab and he fakes the left hand. Boom, boom. And this is when Bilal's back to the fence. Like I said, he wants to get him back against the fence. So he jabs, fake the left hand. So you're going to slip to your right. Now the opponent's like, oh, he's not going to throw the left again. Boom, fires that straight left hand. He threw it. He faked it, then he threw it. A lot of guys will fake his shot and throw on the opposite side. He goes jab, fake the left hand. Okay, he's not going to throw it. Boom, throws the left hand, drops Bilal Muhammad. 
Um, the straight left is just continuing to land here. Neil goes straight left, then left high kick into a one-two. So he uses the pullback from the kick, as I explained earlier. So he goes straight left, boom. Then left high kick, Blal blocks it, but he uses the momentum of the pullback and the kick to go one-two. So straight left, boom, left high kick, pull back, pop, pop, one, two. Circling and framing off the lead shoulder again, and he circles back to avoid the check hook of Bilal as he uh, puts him up against the fence. Neil darts in with the straight left hand. This is obviously to get his back off the fence. He does not want to be back against the fence. He wants to get the opponent back to the fence. So he darts in with the straight left hand, then throws the straight left again and sees Muhammad slip to the outside. What did we talk about? You slip to the outside of that straight left. He's going to use it to set up the high kick. Straight left, throws the straight left again, sees him slip, then fakes the straight left, lands the left high kick, drops Bilal Muhammad. Um, let's go on to the, We're going to move on to the third part, guys, because we're running out of time here.